Meow. Meow. You still have your shaved spot. Although, I don't know if you can see it. The shadow of everything might make it hard to see. Yeah, I don't think you can see anything. Um, his fur is actually growing back. It's just growing back slowly. That's fine, Zone Kitty. I can't grow hair on my head. If you can't grow hair on your belly, it will just look strange. I would rather that than your life at risk. Good kitten internet. Realization from all of these vlogs, I don't have a chair in my bedroom, and if you're wondering why the camera's moving around so much, it's zone. He was rubbing up against the camera. So, um, I don't have a topic to talk about this time. Cat. I don't have a topic to talk about this time. I wanted something quick and then couldn't come up with anything quick. I've used up all my quick topics. Ugh. I have longer topics, so I guess I can talk about the things I still want to cover. I want to have a video about privilege still. I want to give a video that's a review of my laptop. And... Really, Cat? Why are you rubbing up against the... No, I can't even see my... He's right here. This is the way Zone gets, usually. He's very friendly to me. And to be fair, a lot of it's because he's cooped up inside all day. Um, by inside, I don't mean in the house. I mean in my bedroom. Um, my cats are still not getting along. I haven't... This week, I haven't tried getting Zone and Isun back in the same room. But Isun keeps just immediately wanting to run away the moment he enters the room. It's weird. Like, the moment he realizes there's Zone in here, he just immediately tries to run, starts trying to claw at the door. Uh, I just need to get them to calm down. That's all it would take. So, let's see. Um, other things going on. Tomorrow is role-playing night for me, and I'm going to have everybody here for once. It's the first time that's happened in seven-plus years. Um, so, I'm excited about that. I should actually look up to see how long it really has been. Unfortunately, I, I've i prepped some, but not anywhere near as much as I wanted to prep. And sure, we'll talk about that. Um, Role-playing and prep. I am terrible when it comes to prep as a GM. Um, I can prep certain things fairly well. I can prep scenarios. I can prep situations. I can prep... Okay, if there's a fight, these will be the combatants most likely. But what I can't prep is a full adventure, including maps and everything. And, I don't know. I need to think as to what's causing me to... Like I said, I don't have a chair in my bedroom, so I'm just laying on my bed. Um, I need to figure out why I can't prep things like that. Because that doesn't make much sense to me. Um, hmm. So, I like drawing maps, so it's not that. But for some reason, I just can't draw out, like, okay, this is the... Really, Gat? Really? So, I can't draw things out like, this is the terrain that they're going to be in, and so on. I can picture it in my head. The in So, what's going to happen in this adventure? Um... And I mostly know this because the players have helped, kind of told me. But, Cat, you are not comfortable where you're walking. Um, so, the adventuring party, and for reference, this is the dining campaign. I've mentioned that in last year's Vita. So, if you were watching last year's Vita, it's the same campaign. It's just we're finally approaching a break time. And I should stop reflecting light directly into the lens. Um, so, yeah. This is the dining campaign. The party are all level 9 at this point. I'm down to 5 party members. So we've got 2 monks, a bard, a sorcerer, and a cleric. And what am I forgetting? 2 bards, sorcerer, cleric, 
Or two monks, a bard, a sorcerer, and a cleric. Nope, that would be five. Um, so we've got those five party members, and I just realized I put back on my glasses, but oh well. Um, we have those five party members, and they have been contacted by somebody from another one of the... Mm, how to phrase... So, in the plane of Dis right now, there were, at the start of the campaign, eight different groups that all started exploring the plane at the same time. This is from another one of the groups, and the party has found out that this group claims to be from the same world that they are, and they've been able to corroborate a lot of aspects of their world, but not quite everything. So the leading theory on the part... Why are you now unfocused? Did it try to focus on, like, a bit of zone fluff or something? Um, so the party currently believes that the other group that they've made contact with are from a parallel version of their world. Um, because one world has an Isle of Mystery, and the other world lost an Isle that they call the Isle of Mystery. And that's the... There's been several differentiations. Um, for one, the other world appears to be monotheistic, which is definitely not the case for the campaign setting. And they widely practice slavery, and the most major city of the campaign setting's world is completely unknown in the other world. So there's obviously some very major differences, but they've been in contact with what's referred to as a Noctomancer, this Noctomancer, uh, his form of magic is based out of a splat book from D&D 3.5. Um, it was called the Tome of Magic. It included three different types of magic casting in there. That was, um, let's see, what was it? Binding, True Naming... And Shadow Magic. And this is Shadow Magic. It's actually been in the setting before, but I don't think the party remembers the players, that is. Or the players that were in previous campaign. Um, anyway, point is, Noctomancy is my 5th edition take on it. And it is effectively a weaker form of magic, but it's a lot more subtle. Like, for instance... <clears throat> There, I'll sit up a bit, and I am sitting on my tablet. There we go. Um, for an example, you can have a Noctomancer use... Um, not, I'm trying to think of an example of the same spell-like thing that exists on both. Um, Mage Hand. Mage Hand is a common cantrip spell for wizards, sorcerers, bards... Warlocks. A lot of classes get it. It's a standard arcane cantrip that basically produces a hand and does stuff with it. It's a fairly simple spell. The Noctomancy version of it, which gives you a shadow hand, doesn't require somatic or verbal components. So in other words, you can go walking around whistling while you work and people may not be able to tell that you just cast a Noctomancy spell, which according to their contact, is the reason why it's banned everywhere, that and they appear to have a very oppressive government. Um, so, this Noctomancer, who has been in contact with the mem bard member of the party through her dreams, has started... Well, he's a slave... Or I should say, all of this is what he's saying. I'm not going to reveal any secrets in this video. Um, he's a slave for the forces on the other side of the world. And those forces happen to have a scout patrol that's going out toward where the party's at. So he made sure that he was going to join that scout patrol because it's his best chance of escaping. So I know that situation. All of that has happened in previous adventures. And this adventure, we're going to be fast-forwarding to the time where they will be encountering. What I don't know, for an example, is if there's going to be a fight. <coughs> I think it's fairly likely that there will be, so I'm trying to prepare and have stats for a fight in the event that it happens. But, well, 
One, my party is very good at not actually fighting things. Um, they're unlikely to befriend these folk at this point. The, the opposition, so to speak, has no reason to believe that the party is violent or opposing them at all. But they've already seen signs that the opposition is, shall we say, not with the same set of morals that the party has. So there's likely going to be conflict if they start talking long enough. Um, I think it's possible that the party is going to try to slip this guy out, their contact, but I don't know how feasible that's going to be. I will certainly let them try, quote from Mercer, uh, but that doesn't mean they're going to succeed. In fact, honestly, I don't think they will. And the party has reason to believe that they won't either. Um, they've made friends with another one of the groups that arrived in the world at the same time. It was a group of water elementals, uh, led by a... Uh, Darn it. I can't remember the type of gin for water. It's going to bother me. Oh, well. Um, led by one of them. And they had been exploring all over the place. Basically, they were exploring the Inland Sea. Inland Sea slash Ocean. Um, I believe I called it the Iron Sea. And they encountered the other group. The other group immediately attacked. And a lot of water elementals died. The, they basically got their asses handed to them. And that's not exactly expected. So, the party already knows that as a whole, that group is much stronger than they are. But, they're also only going to be dealing with a small party of that group. Whether that's still more powerful than them is up in the air. So, I already know that they're going to try to not attack at first sight. Try. This party has a bit of a problem with impulse control, so I can't guarantee I can't guarantee anything. So, so here's where I start having problems. Logically, what I should be doing is prepping one the combatants in the adventure. Um, in the event that they do attack, I want to make sure I have stats for that because that's not something I want to come up on the fly. If they are going to fight, this is going to be a very difficult encounter. They're going to need to do things to bring them some type of advantage if they want to actually fully defeat their foes. But, and they've already done one thing, which they didn't realize they've actually done, but whatever. Um, they already have a little bit of help, but it's not going to be enough. So, I know I need to prep that, and I do have about half of that prepped already. I'll be able to prep the other half on the way to work tomorrow. Um... The second part, though, is that I should have prepped where their encounter is going to be at. And mentally, I already generally know where. Um, and I'm not giving that away right now. Haha, <laughs> I've got you players watching this. Because technically, this video is going to probably be uploaded tomorrow morning, because I'm tired and I'm not going to edit tonight. Um, probably uploaded tomorrow morning. Maybe even tomorrow night, uh, depending on how much time I end up getting for editing. And that means it's possible that the part, some of my players might watch this video before we start role-playing. So I want to make sure that doesn't happen. Uh, what else? So yeah, I should probably have prepped the area, but for some reason I cannot prep the area. I went to go do that before recording this video because I was going to do prep, then talk about the prep in this video, and then take a shower and go to bed. But that didn't happen. I kept distracting myself with YouTube or Tumblr or Facebook or any of that stuff. So my procrastination usually comes for a reason. I don't tend to procrastinate things unless if something is making me not want to deal with it. Imposter syndrome, depression, hating what I'm going to do, and none of those really apply in this case. So I really don't know why. There's got to be some type of reason, some type of block that's making me not wanting to prep. Maybe it's... Maybe it's because it, whenever I heavily prep adventures, my players seem to have less fun. It's a really backwards way of handling it. I do prep things all the time. I'm not 100% improvising anything on my adventures. Usually it's more like a 
20% prep, 80% improv. Maybe even lower prep. And Zone's gotten to the phase of dive bombing my clothes. I'm going to stop this video here because once he's in this phase, it gets really noisy. I'll talk to you tomorrow, Internet. Bye!